what it is like to be Max Verstappen's teammate? How would you describe it? The first thing is, you know, a lot of people say that car is built around him. He's he's kind of the what, like the Michael Schumacher of Ferrari. Um, he's created this this team around him, but truthfully, the car is what it is. He is very quick. So what ends up happening is he has quite a unique driving style, actually. It's not that easy to get along with. Um, I have Everyone has a driving style. I, I would say my driving style is a bit more on the smooth side, um, but I like a car that has a good front end, so quite sharp, quite direct. Um, Max does too, but his level of sharp and direct is kind of another... <laughs> It's a whole different level. It, it's it's eye watering, um, eye wateringly sharp. And to give people kind of a maybe an explanation of what that might feel like, I don't know if you guys play computer games at all, but if you bump up the sensitivity right. completely to the max and you move that mouse and it's just darting across the screen everywhere, that's kind of how it feels. It becomes so sharp that it makes you a little bit tense. And so what ended up happening was. Um, especially during my year, you start off being a little bit behind, um, but not by much. And then as the season goes on, and Max wants this front end in the car, he wants his car to be sharper, sharper. And as it goes sharper and sharper, he goes quicker and quicker. And for you to catch up, you have to start taking a little bit more risk. Um, you know, you might be a couple of tenths behind one one session. I'll just try a little bit more. Okay, I've gone off. I've had a crash. So then you've got to restart. Then you've lost a little bit of confidence. It takes a little bit more time. That gap's growing a little bit. And then the next time you try and go out and you know do another job, another spin or another whatever. And it just starts to snowball. And every time the car becomes sharper and sharper, you start to come more tense. And I think um, it's like any sport. If you start to to not be in that flow state and you're having to really think about it and every time you go into a corner you don't know how it's going to react you don't have that kind of um, well it's purely the confidence in the car oh, yeah. the flow um, it just it doesn't work it never works so were you enjoying being a Red Bull driver at this point? not at all no I, I, I was um, I was struggling I think I was struggling with the attention around it um you know, of course, I deleted all my socials and, and I got away from the social media side of thing. I think Formula One in itself is a whole different topic about, you know, the new generation and, and the, the new fan base that comes with it. It, it is very different, but it, it was quite toxic, truthfully. And um, What do you mean by that? Just your seat's on, under the spotlight. You know, if, you, if I went anywhere, if I... If I um, Twitter or Instagram or whatever, um, the memes that come after you, the the kind of the, it's it's a very you know Gen Z kind of style of of mocking where um, you know you become almost a laughing joke and it's the uh, it's the easy go to yeah. when whenever something happens it's always um, a quote of yours or a spin of yours or whatever it may be so you get rid of it as much as you can but Thursdays at a track you can't you have media day. And um, I think most sports might be similar to ours, but, you know, there's only two drivers in a team. So with marketing and with the media, you get assigned a lot of time with them. Um, and so, this, you know, the questions you get, um, you know, you're not performing. Who do you think will re who could replace you? Or, you know, this driver's performing. What do you think about him? Or, um, you know, why, why are you struggling? And all these kind of things. You... As much as you ignore it, you can't. You, you, you actually can't. Because on a Thursday, you figure out what everyone's been saying. Well, I was going to ask, as a self-confessed introvert, uh -huh. how, how do you handle this then? Um, not very well. <laughs> so I would say to, to begin with, um, you know, I, I blocked it out. I actually you know, I took a stiff, stiff arm and, and tried to get rid of most of it as I could. Um, but the reality of it was it doesn't really work because because of these you know, these moments where you, you can't ignore what's going on just because because you're getting reminded of it and it's not it's 
just noise at the end of the day. And I think as I understood that it's just noise, um, I felt, and this sounds strange to say, the more I was self-aware about it, as long as I had my core roots and core feelings of you know, where I'm at and, and the progress I'm making and the areas I'm working on, um, it really stopped getting to me at a, some point. And it's, that, that does sound quite strange to say, but at some points I was getting, oh God, all, this, all, these, all these comments, all, these, all this noise, all these guys having the cheek to ask me this question. And then it just got to a point where it kind of plateaued and I just started to, to, to just focus on myself. So, you know, psychologist, working with my trainer, um, working on certain areas of my, of my racing. I was, I was quite lucky where I had a year away from the sport. So, so as, I, as, the, as the, the negativity grew and grew and grew, by the end of the year, I kind of got to this point where I was flat. I was yeah. you know, just destroyed mentally and, and didn't really have much motivation. Um, as I had the year away, this noise stopped quite quickly. And I had about, well, it was realistically about six or seven months to process everything and to go back in and, and, and to fix it. What's, what was the support network like for a 23-year-old suddenly under the glare of the spotlight, possibly having, you know, some mental health challenges and needing to yeah. speak to a psychologist. You know, let's talk about it in the truth for what it was. Um, w w what help was there f from the team to, to understand your position? It's a tricky position because I think Red Bull especially, they have one extremely quick driver, but they're not that used to having young drivers in their team. So... Um, you know, there was help and, and there was advice when needed, but it's not that obvious actually. And so, um, you know, I was with my trainer, we kind of looked at sports psychologists just to see if um, I, I need to get that confidence back and that, that inner belief back. Um, but it, it's very small and, and, and I think people don't realize that Formula One, as much as it is a team sport, it's, it's still very individual. Um, you have the team and, and the team um, do care about you and they, and they do want the best for you. But it's, it, it's a strange sport where you have your little circle. It, it's a team within a team. And you have your little support network, which for me is my family. And at the time, my trainer, and that, that was it. It was, us, it was us three, let's say. Um, but I realized in time that that wasn't big enough. And actually, you know, I didn't have a manager at the time or, um, you know, at the, even anyone to kind of handle, you know, the social side of things. Yeah. So I went quiet on everything. Um, it's really tough. It's really tough what, when, you, when you don't perform. What was the toughest moment when you look back on that season? Hey guys, it's Jake here. Listen, before you go, please do me just one favor hit subscribe. It makes such a difference to us. The more subscribers we get, then the bigger the channel becomes, the bigger the channel becomes, the bigger the names we can attract and the more impact we can have for you. So thanks for watching and please subscribe right now.